Bracchus Rex, ruler to some, tyrant to others, long dead to all. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to elves. Pa told me elves and lizards and dwarves bring bad guys. Void guys. That's right, isn't it? They said I'm a sorcerer too, like an elf, right? They brought me here without Ma or Pa. The child screws up his face and looks at you hard. He lifts his mirror up to his nose, closes one eye and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island, but it's a lot nicer out here than inside. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured, and maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. I guess I am, but it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. Void were rubbish. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood red colour. Could he be. Yes, you recognise him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smouldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. My gratitude is worth a great deal, if only you'd realise it. But of course you don't, so we'll leave it at that. Now then, if there's nothing further... I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Judging by the dark pools that are your eyes, I'd say you're seeing yourself. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. 
and shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lot, what do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? The very same. I am the Red Prince, the All Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has a hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards, then, to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're aware, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! Rubbish. Beauteous creature, almost as graceful as I am.
I wonder where this leads. This again? As the alcove opens up, you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation! That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. Oh, yes. An exceptionally common, but exceptionally valuable commodity. A face. A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately but viciously rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me. And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal. Oh, get away! Monster, hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts. And you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So... If I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I have important things to do on Reaper's Coast. I cannot simply sit about waiting for the rest of you to die so I may continue my business in peace. No, I may be an eternal, but my patience has its limits. Indeed, I may be the only eternal. My people seem rather absent, at least from this realm. As for the others, well, there is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off.
not enough that you travel with me? Must you speak, too? Go on, then. Bark away. Let's see if we can find any method in it. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? Yes. I can imagine it might be somewhat difficult for you to forever be in my shadow. Go on, then. Play in the sun. I have actual work to do. You hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find a small human child holding her knees and trembling. She looks up at you as if to answer, but recoils at the sight of you and buries her face in her knees once more. Because you're a master. Master sent us here. Me and Ma and Pa. She was not a nice lady. Blizzards aren't nice ladies. They beat me. Gee, you don't sound like a master. You're nicer than the others. But I still miss my ma and pa. How do you know? The child smiles. She starts tracing small shapes, hearts and stars and diamonds into the dirt. Where is she? You go with us. Who are you? Are you from the shelter? She says nothing of another. Fire, alas! She is so late! The elf looks at you sideways, as though sizing you up. Her features tighten into an angry frown, before suddenly collapsing in defeat. I fear this happens. How else does she take us without bribing every guard in this place? I save a reserve, just in case. Here. Tell Magister Atuza it is the last we have. She says there is a shelter in the marshes outside the fort. She says she brings us there first. She knows a safe path. We wait for a boat, and then we go. Wherever we make a new home. Tell her we wait. Tell her she is our last hope to leave this place.
What's this? I found something. I need to dig here. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. Here lies a nameless inmate. May he find the peace denied him in life in the Hall of Echoes. junk. Godwin has asked you a question. Answer him. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Oh, I don't think I ain't watching. That's your fifth blue jester this round. What of it? Um, uh, Mummy's right here. What of Where are you? Ah, Come on, you she's gone, man. Father. I can't wait. God. Don't like the game, Topsy, you can fold. No, no! Just because the pair of you are filthy cheating liars don't mean I can't beat you! Irma? You! You there! You, you've just arrived, isn't that right? Are you... Are you quite alone? In that case, listen up. You must think me mad to approach a stranger, but this camp is full of cowards and I'm running out of time. Fast. 
too fast. Way too fast. I've been here a long time. Longer than anyone else. People get taken sometimes. Some folks say they get cured. I don't know if I believe it, and I don't want to wait and find out. I have a way out of here. It won't be easy, and I need a partner. Just one. Are you interested? Had a gal. Who wouldn't? Finally, someone with a little sense around here. The plan's simple. Completely foolproof. I have a spell that I can use to teleport you right out of here. I can't use it on myself, but with your help, we can both get out of here. There's an artifact that you can use to teleport me out of this place. Then I can use my spell to free you in turn. Uh, this item, though, it's in quite an unfortunate location. It's found its way into a nest of crocodilians on a secluded beach nearby. Here, here give me a map and I'll show you where to go. Not enough to trouble a fine specimen such as yourself. Get that artifact, and you and I are as good as free. Go give those overgrown lizards what for. Come on, then. Dear one, help me teach this beast. He must respect. Respect? Huh. <laughs> Someone's got to keep this place running. Griff can't do it for free. Why'd you gotta make this so hard? An intense looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognize him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. Pay up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Burrow looks you both up and down, sizing up your combined threat. Ah, get out of here. The both of you. You ain't worth the sweat of my brow anyhow. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me, before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. <laughs>